Hi guys, now I'm going to introduce the uh, strobe balance method. Um, the method's fairly simple, uh, it's actually the easiest out of all three to do, and it doesn't require um, a PC. So the setup um, only requires the accelerometer to be mounted on the ductive fan unit, and it requires the strobe light to be positioned around about two inches. Uh, five centimeters away from the nose cone of the ducted fan unit or test article. Um, so to get started um, I'll spool up the ducted fan unit to the target frequency and then I will switch over to the strobe mode. Um, once you switch over to the strobe mode uh, the strobe light will flash twice indicating that you're in that mode and the vortex will sample the vibration level for approximately 10 seconds. Um, once that uh, sample time is complete, um, the strobe light will appear and that will let you know that you're ready to continue with the balance. Now the Vortex system has been set up and calibrated for the strobe method, we can progress to determine the original vibration of the system. The way this can be performed is as follows. Spool up the abductive uh, fan unit or the test article to the target frequency and hold it there. Um, after that uh, test article stabilizes, what you need to do is to adjust the trigger level on the Vortex uh, analyzer until you see a solid line appear on the hub. Now the location of the line could be anywhere. It won't necessarily be um, at the zero reference position. It could be at any location. So I'll spool up the RPM and adjust um, the trigger level until we see that solid line. Okay, so after the solid line appeared on the hub on the ductive fan unit, I read. I can now read the um, the trigger level on the dial situated on the side. In this case, um, the reading on the trigger dial was five and a half. So what I can do now is using um, a polar graph or polar chart, I can actually map the location of the line and also the magnitude and that will give me my original vibration vector. So in our case um, the trigger level registered to be about five and a half so I can count uh, one, two, three, four, five point five which is here and draw a line from the origin out and that would be my original vibration level. The next step is to apply uh, a trial weight to the zero reference position on the hub of the ductive fan unit. <clears throat> um, again, the uh, desired weight can be anything you wish. Um, anything less than one gram for this particular application should be fine. So here's my weight, uh, a piece of blue tack. So I'll place that on the scale. Okay, so that's about 0.3 of a gram. Um, so I'll place that trial weight on the zero degree reference position, like so.
Now I'm actually ready to spool up the ductor fan unit and again record the position and also the trigger level of the vibration using the trial weight. Okay, after the second run uh, using the trial weight, I can now map the uh, direction or the location of the white line on the hub as well as the magnitude. So looking at the trigger level on the vortex, I registered a reading of 8. And the location was around 45 degrees on the hub. So I can map out 8 and 45 degrees. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is here. So I draw a line from here to the origin, like so. So that's my trial vector. <clears throat> okay, once this is done, uh, the next step is to draw a line from this point to that point. So in other words, complete the triangle, like so. So this line actually becomes what they call the correction vector. In other words, what do you need to do to um, correct the vibration, or the imbalance, I should say. Okay, so once we've got this on the plot, what we need to do is measure the included angle. There. So put my protractor over that triangle. So I'm measuring from the original imbalance vector to the correction vector. It measures around 65 degrees from this direction to there. So that's 65 degrees, which is the included angle. Okay, so given the angle of 65 degrees, we can now determine the location of the correction weight. And this is how it's done. First of all, you need to determine the phase shift direction. Now, the phase shift direction is essentially the shift between from the original vibration vector to the trial weight vector. So in our case, the phase shift occurred in a clockwise direction. In other words, the original was here, the trial weight vector was there, so shifted clockwise. Our correction weight should be applied at 65 degrees in the opposite direction to the phase shift. So, that means starting from the zero reference position, I rotate 65 degrees which is about here. So that now I know where to apply my correction weight. The next thing to determine is, well, what should be the correction weight? And this is how it's done. The original trigger level divided by the trial uh, run level multiplied by the original trial weight. So, for example, the original uh, vibration or trigger level was 5.5 divided by the trial weight trigger level which was 8 multiplied by the trial weight which was 0.3. Once we calculate that it ends up being 0 0.2 grams. So our final solution is, I'll just move that over, apply 0 0.02 grams at 65 degrees, which is this location, going in a anti-clockwise direction from the zero reference position. Okay, so now I've applied my trial weight of 0 0.2 uh, grams at the 65 degree um, location 
And now to check the final balance, what I'll do is I'll spool up the uh, ductor fan unit to the target frequency and wind down the trigger level until I start to see um, a white line or a strobe line. So here it goes. Okay, um, that was actually quite a good balance. Um, I was able to wind the trigger level all the way down and I wasn't able to see a white line. So that means that the ductor fan unit is fairly well balanced. And that concludes our balance.